Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 21 for a spaceship game that I'm making with my buddy Rich and a whole bunch of help from the community. Today, I'm really excited because we have a really cool new warping effect that I want to just get to right away and show you, and then a whole bunch of other cool stuff on top of that. Okay, so here we are in the main test level. I'm going to go ahead and do a warp in, and you can see what that looks like. And shout out to Panzer V1, who's been doing a lot of the sound effects for this game. He got this one done just in time for the devlog. There it is with another ship coming in. Uh, this is a multi-layer process that was really fun to tackle this week. I thought it would take like a day. It took longer than that, but it was a really fun challenge. Again, shout out to Badfish, who has been basically a VFX consultant for us. They helped us figure out how to do the stretchy effect for the ship and also just clean up the effect and get it to where it is now. Now, as for how this effect is built, it's actually five different layers of particles plus all the back end stuff that Rich did. And I'm going to have him explain that in a second. But the first layer is basically the black hole effect, which is a fountain emitter. It's pretty simple. It's basically an alpha map on a sprite renderer. So the alpha map is this here. Can I open it? Let's see. There we go. So it's this image that I just made in Photoshop, dragged it over here. I put it on a uh, material that basically affects the refraction index. And so that alpha map creates a cool refraction effect in the world. And so if I turn it up this way, you can see it starts to bend the environment, which is really cool. So that was the first stage of the effect. Now, the second layer to the effect is a burst particle that spawns along a cylinder. See, so basically I turned the cylinder sideways, stretched it out and made it the trail of the ship. And then it spawns a bunch of particles that burst out at a specific velocity and then fade away. Not too complicated, but it does add that nice little trail effect. Then on top of that is a simple flash effect that you probably didn't notice because it's subtle, but when it's not there, it looks a little different. Um, I grabbed a energy disc from a different VFX bundle I got. It was part of an explosions bundle. And I layered that in here and that just creates the little poof once it shows up. And then the last layer for this is a little light that it's essentially a light render that just activates at about um, two seconds in and it's only active for like 13 hundredths of a second or something like that. And then basically when we hit play, you'll notice the ship flashes blue for like half a second, or you might have not noticed that it flashes blue. Let's if we can zoom in. Yeah, just a quick little blue flash there. I might adjust it, but uh, super subtle layers of effects to build up the whole warp and effect. Now, as to what's going on behind the scenes, that's something that I actually don't even really understand. So I'm going to let Rich explain it. For this effect, we wanted it to look like the ship was going really fast and came to an abrupt stop. So there's a few effects happening here, but one of them is just stretching out the ship. If I pause it here right while it's starting to stretch out, while it's starting to contract, you can see little bits of the ship and they're just stretched out over space. There's a little problem here with the cargo bay lights, but that's just one of a few small issues we still need to fix with this. As I step through this frame by frame, you can see the ship starting to come together and shrink to its normal size. So one of the problems that could happen if you're stretching out the ship like this is if it crosses through something, it could wreak havoc. So if this was just a little bit to its right, it would be going through this nav beacon and causing all kinds of problems. To make it so it doesn't cause all those problems, the, we're not stretching out the hit boxes, we're not uh, moving a bunch of things around all at once. We're just going to change the material of the skin of the ship to make it look like it's stretched out. So here we have one of our master materials. This one is going to be applied to every ship and every structure in the game. There's a bunch going on here. But really, we just want to focus on this little bit down here. This lets us make it look like the ship is stretched out, but it's not really. We do this by affecting something called the world position offset. This means that for every vertex in the mesh, for example, our example here is a sphere. There's going to be a bunch of vertices. For each one of those, we want to apply some offset so that we can scale and move this entire mesh if we want to. 
but it only scales and moves how it's rendered. It doesn't move any hitboxes or anything else like that. So I'll show a quick example here. This is our custom input where we'll pass our vector. This is RGB. It's, it, it manifests as a color in the shader editor, but what this really is is X, Y, Z coordinates. So we want our ship to stretch front to back. So that's X coordinate. So let's put in a thousand here just to show this example. So now we see our uh, our sphere is stretched out on its X axis. Now I can show you, since this is a master material, actually let's make this more dramatic. And if we apply this, you can see that everything in the game is now stretched out. So what are these nodes doing? Well, I'll gloss over them pretty quickly, but I'll also show you by taking them in and out of effect and show you what each section is doing. I'm going to start by turning on this uh, little debug section I made. This essentially just animates the effect over time, so it's easier to see what's going on. So what's happening is it's both scaling and it's changing the pivot over time. If I take out the scaling, it's only changing the pivot, so it's just moving it back and forth. If I take them both out, it does nothing. This is just normal. Uh, if I bring in just the scaling, now it's scaling with the pivots not moving. So what we want for the ship is we want it to kind of scale away from the nose of the ship. So that's why we'll put in this, uh, this sort of pivot offset. And again, if I apply that to everything, it looks kind of funny. Now, outside of the particle effects, I've been really busy on creating an asteroid-based template. A lot of help from some concept art. So... If you've been watching the devlogs at all, you'll know that I built this asteroid base here uh, pretty early on in the process, mostly just to explore the concept of an asteroid base and fading out the top section and stuff like that, but it was always going to be a temporary base. Well, I've been working on a new base based on a concept from Island, who's our concept artist for the game. And this is sort of the beginnings of it. It's still got a lot of work to do. I don't like this texture at the moment. We'll replace it. But what I really like is the scale of it. On approach, you can see the rock coming from further away. It just adds this extra sense of like, oh yeah, we would build an asteroid base in a giant asteroid. I uh, got a new fade out texture working thanks to some help from the community. I don't have to cut the model in half anymore. Some clever material tricks going on there. And yeah, we got the asteroid base interior. As for some of the new building things that I had to learn, um, I had to learn how to tile a material, which isn't super complicated, but basically I'm trying to save material space so all of these four floor platings use the same material. And then to differentiate them a little bit, I'm using some decals on top. And this stuff is actually just built right into Unreal Engine, which is cool. There's a Quixel Bridge, which is a neat platform that Epic bought. And it lets you just place decals in the world that will essentially layer themselves on top of your existing geometry. And it's a great way to add variety to materials that you need to loop for long periods of time and make it not look like they're looped or that they're more unique. Now to bring the interior of the station alive, I've got a bunch of plans, one of which is building a good soundscape for it. And I've begun to do that here with the help of, again, from Panzer V1. He created a good background ambiance sound that I use for the nav beacon which sounds like this. He's going to remake one for the space station, but for the time being, I'm using it as a background sound. And then every 20 seconds, it will play an audio file from an array here. So we've got 10 different comms arrays, and then you wait a little bit of period of time, and it'll play a random one. And it shouldn't loop them. Actually, I need to up that no repeat there. And that just adds some really fun ambiance to the space and makes it feel more alive. Once I can add in some more blinking lights and maybe some animation and stuff happening, the bases should feel a lot more dynamic. Now, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the Discord community this week. If you want to check out our Discord, there's a link for it in the video description. But basically posting questions on there on like how to build a material or how to solve a problem. People have been super responsive and super helpful and uh, it's just sped up the workflow 
exponentially. So I just wanted to say thank you guys. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic having you help out. And again, to the people who are physically building things for the game or consulting us on the side. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the project. We appreciate you very much. And if you're behind on the devlogs or you might not know what Space Game is about, check out this video here. Uh, leave us a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more devlog content like this. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.